Welcome to this special video version of One on One with Mitch LaFawn. I am your host, Mitch LaFawn. Joining me this week from the band Bonfire is singer David Reese. Their new album is called Glorious, and it is definitely worth checking out. Uh, this edition of One on One with Mitch LaFawn is brought to you by the Heavy Montreal Festival taking place at Parc Jean Drapeau in beautiful downtown Montreal, August 7th, 8th, and 9th. This year, featuring performances by Slipknot, Corn, Extreme, Dokken, and many, many more. Um, so let's sit back and enjoy my chat with singer David Reese. Here's David. We are speaking with David Reese, now from Bonfire. How's that sound? Sounds pretty good. Feels pretty good. <laughs> yeah, you know, and uh, I'm going to show the folks this thing here, the, uh, the new Bonfire album, Glorious. I've had a chance to listen to it many, many times. It is a great, great sounding album. You know, sometimes when you get a band that hasn't been around for a while or hasn't recorded something, you go, oh, what's going to happen? And I put it on and you blew me away. You, you absolutely blew me away. Mission accomplished. Yep. Yeah. Isn't that a great feeling? Yeah, it, uh, it blows me away too. I mean, the response has just been insane. I mean, uh, we're charting all over Europe. Uh, so the highest charting record for Bonfire in their history. Yep. <clears throat> And Germany's just inhaling the thing. I don't know about the rest of Europe how good the charting is, but I know we're number two right now at Amazon. I think we're number twenty at uh, the top one hundred. So, yeah, I saw that he's been uh, Hans has been posting these uh, pictures of uh, the charts and and all that. So, so, so let's start with that. Now, how familiar were you with Bonfire? Fairly so. Um, okay. I mean, I, I like I said earlier before we got. Live here, uh, we, I met Hans. we were uh, recording the Accept album, right. and Bonfire was next door in one of the other rooms. And we, you know, we went next door and drank at the pub together and kind of visited. But I only really got to talk to him in 2010. Uh, Bangalore Choir did a show with Firefest, and they were on after us. And I, he kind of mentioned, Hey, would you like to do some recording together? And I'm like, Yeah, 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 I was busy, and blah blah blah. But, uh, Right. Well, that happens all the time at shows. You meet someone and you go, hey, yeah. it'd be cool if you did a solo on my... Mm -hmm. right, I'll know? play guitar. Would you sing for me? And you kind of go, mm-hmm, phew. But, yeah. I mean, the guy stayed focused. He was all over me, so... Yeah, it's a good feeling. So, so and we'll, we'll get to the accept days after because that's a whole story uh, in itself. Oh, yeah. Um, coming into the Bonfire Glorious album, how much of it did you get to write and how much of it was, no, Hans, this is what Bonfire is, David, just sing and don't, you know, how, what was the process? Uh, truthfully, uh, we know, we had worked together all last summer, we right. toured with Easy Living, we got to know each other really well. But Easy Living's a side project, this is his yeah. baby. So when he handed me the idea that we should carry the flame with Bonfire, uh, no pun intended, um, he played about, about 30 pieces. Mm -hmm. um, and to be honest, four of them I liked. Okay. And I kind of focused on four. Well, he kept pushing the other parts to me that are on the record. And I sat down and I listened. And uh, he basically the parts previously, you've heard this a million times, were just riffs, you know, with a drum machine. And mm -hmm. uh, when he started saying, okay, we're going to do these songs, because that was his decision. I want these songs. This is me. This is Bonfire. Write lyrics to this. That's when it started. So basically, uh, I believe I've written every song, excluding one or two that I co-wrote. Ronnie Parks contributed to one, and John Wilde wrote lyrics with me on two. But the best, the rest of it, I wrote with Hans, the full Monty. What attracted you to to, to Bonfire? I mean, because you, you you've been with you know Bangalore Choir, you've done uh, the Easy Living with with Hans, you've done Accept. What did made you decide, okay, I want to lend my voice to this band. This, this is my future for now. Uh, like you said, the, the jam project throughout Europe last summer, working with Hans, I got to know him personally and musically. Uh, but the, the bottom line is I want a tour. Right. I do, I've done a plethora of projects that you know, always have the promise that you know, the label is going to do this and blah, blah, blah. To be honest, he's the only guy that fulfills you know what he says as far as touring i mean we did 40 shows last year and he said hey if we do the bonfire thing we can step it up you right. want a tour i said of course <clears throat> um 
that's that's my main focus because I mean singing in somebody's studio at home is redundant I mean there's so many albums now they all sound alike it just wasn't I'm not happy um, I get to go on stage and that's what I am I mean as a singer I have to work making records you can't you can't really use your instrument I mean uh, and you can't use your style or and all that stuff fully I don't think so yeah it's touring and we're touring <laughs> yeah that'll be fun um, you know the bonfire hasn't been to North America in fact I don't even know if they've been to it's been at least 20 years or so oh, is yeah. there any plans on coming out over to North America and trying yep. yeah we have uh, rock and skull in October oh. I just got off the phone with a promoter in the Midwest he's trying to throw a bunch of shows in be before that um, yeah, that's the plan. I mean, but the band is, I mean, everybody knows who we are, but they don't know who we are. Right. It's a European band. I mean, we're, we're big in Europe, but, uh, kind of like a uh, warrant in the States, you know, they come over here and 20 people show up. Right. Um, uh, so yeah, we want to try to do it. Why do you think that is? I mean, you're, you're coming into it fresh. Why do you think it is that a, that a fan, that a band like Bonfire didn't, uh, you know, excite the fan base, North America? Uh, probably the same answer is why didn't Bangalore Choir go to number one? Right. I mean, we had all the, the label support, the videos. Uh, I think some people just, some bands just don't quite grab that it thing. Right. Uh, <clears throat> it's painful when they have everything that the other band has, but certain labels and, and audiences just kind of adhere to one thing, and they're not like, oh, there's a German band coming over. Let's give it our whole focus, you know. It's a different band now. I mean, we've got some international guys in the band. Maybe it'll help us over there. Um, I don't really see radio giving us a push anymore like the old days, but, you know, anything's possible. Right. You know? What has Hans told you about the future of the band? Is this sort of a trial thing where you're doing one album and – cross our fingers uh, or as he said hey you're in let's go <clears throat> i'm in let's go it's okay. uh i made some i made some demands of my own you know i wanted i i made it clear that ronnie parks being that he was an easy living would be the bass player okay. for about bonfire i need people that i can live with right uh and of course the other guys in bonfire klaus and uva and i forgot the other guy's name they all pretty much left right. so and hans it's his baby he picked up the torches. I'm taking this on because Bonfire obviously has a bigger name than Easy Living. Mm -hmm. So the doors opened up. And with me and the band and Hans together, it, people went, what, what are these guys doing? You know. Well, so, does so that mean so that Easy Living is done? Yeah, for now. For now. I mean, we play for 100 people a night or we play for 5,000. I mean, it's... Easy. I enjoyed Easy Living. It was very, very organic. I mean, we, we would go off on tangents on stage, 20-minute jams, and I would just make stuff up, and we'd record it. And some of that stuff I kind of used on this record. Uh, I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to bury it. It's not the dead cat in the yard. I mean, but uh, <laughs> right now, Bonfire, you know, Bonfire is our, uh, our baby. Yeah, because i got to tell you, last year, and, and, I, and I, I've mentioned this to you before, I had a skid row show in ottawa and uh it's about a two hour drive from here and the whole drive down was the easy live and firestorm album i just thought it was a great piece of work and you uh, know he he called me about that and actually michael voss put us together he, he was trying to find me mm -hmm. and uh i had a singer i think he was goofing around with it wasn't working out and then he said we'll call david reese he'll do it and uh so i said sure give me some songs i said this is cool and then right after I finished the album, he said, do you want a tour? And I was like, here we go again, more blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and I'm like, sure. He goes, well, how many nights can you do in a row? And I said, well, I can do five, six with a day or two off. He said, great. I mean, in 48 hours, with no exaggeration, he sent me a, a procured list of dates for July. Wow. And I'm like, wow. And plane tickets. And I mean, the guy's for real. He's a touring guy. So... What was the question again? <laughs> well, you know, let, let me let me just take up take up something that you mentioned because you you go well, you know, there's a lot of blah blah blah. How much yeah. of that have you faced in your career, where people just talk this really great game and make all these wonderful promises, and then my nothing life. happens? My whole life, and you know, partly it's my fault. 
Okay. Everybody wants to succeed. Everybody wants to believe that that guy telling you that story is going to come true. But after a while, you get, you know, it's like I always say, you know, there's an old saying where I come from in Montana. You know, you're walking down a trail and somebody says, hey, nice tail. You go to the next village, another guy says, nice tail. Mm -hmm. By the third village, somebody says that, hey, you're going to turn around and look. You know, all right? So after you hear that same, it's the same story, which is ridiculous. It's the same words, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. And you, you just so badly want to go put out what, on stage what you recorded. Right. Uh, but I just got tired of it. You know, I pretty much resolved myself to going back into the painting contracting business and uh, guiding hunts in Montana, which is great. I love to work. I love to hunt. You know, but this popped up and I was like, well, thank you, God. You know, uh, let's go. Yeah. So that, that's good to hear. Now, we mentioned that uh, you were in studio next to or Bonfire was in studio next to Accept years and years ago. Uh, the Eat the Heat album, which, you know, some Accept fans didn't take too <laughs> warmly too uh let's talk about that album that experience how did you get into accept did, did gabby hoffman <clears throat> call you or wolf hoffman wolf, wolf. okay wolf. i i was in colorado okay. and i had been in la literally living in cars you know homeless um, i was i made some demos with mitch perry mm -hmm. and there was a woman named lucy forbes Okay. In Santa Monica that I was sleeping on her floor. She had this little placement agency for rock and roll. And she's a, a dear person, wonderful, hungry, loves music. And she knew Dieter Dirks. Okay. And he'd come to L.A. because they had another guy named Rob Armitage. He okay. wasn't working out. And he said, I need a singer. Well, this guy, David Reese, I've got this cassette. She gave it to him, blah, blah, blah. Long story short, I guess on the way to the airport, he put the cassette in. He goes, that's the guy. She contacted me and said, hey, you're going to get a call from Accept. More work, more stories. More blah, blah, and, blah, uh, right? Okay. Blah, blah, blah. And uh, I got a phone call. We were having a terrible blizzard. Yeah, I remember it like yesterday. And it was Wolf Hoffman. Hello, it's Wolf Hoffman from Accept. May I speak to David Reese? I was like, yeah, I'm Mickey Mouse. And I hung up. <laughs> and I went, wait a minute, maybe that was true. And he called right back. I think he goes, I think, I think he said, I, I, we must have a bad connection. This is Wolf. Can I talk to David? I said, you got him. Really like your voice, David. Would you be interested in coming over to Germany to audition for Accept? What? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so my father, they booked a flight for the next day from Denver Stapleton. And we had to drive through the storm to get there. My father said, we're leaving tonight because the roads were closing. Drives me up there. We crash in a hotel. He says goodbye in the morning. I got on a plane to Dusseldorf, and there it was. Right, there you go. And, you know, Accept was having a lot of success at that time. I mean, Balls to the Wall had been huge throughout the 80s. When you get into the studio, do they say, okay, we need you to be Udo Jr.? Or do they say, okay, nope. we're doing something completely different? What they did, literally, I, the next morning... I mean, I just finally fallen asleep because, of course, excitement and all mm -hmm. that stuff. But jet lag, I'd never had in my life. And I remember that night after they took me to the guest house, which Dieter owned, away from the studio, I couldn't sleep. So I got up and got this crazy idea to go for a walk. And I got lost. You know, Vegas way and street and Strasse and all that stuff. I, it was like storming there, too. And I finally found the place and got back in about 6 in the morning, fell asleep. And like 8 o'clock, Baltus is at the door pounding on my door. And I answered the door. He said, let's go. I said, where are we going? We're going to the studio. And I was like, okay. I thought, cool, I get to meet the Scorpions. <laughs> 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 so, uh, uh, yeah, the Scorpions were there. But, you know, who am I? I walk in going, wow, there's Shanker and uh, Yobbs. And I said, hello, and there's <clears throat> Dirks. And he walked me downstairs to a demo studio and plugged in a 58 with a two-inch machine and started playing me bed tracks. Turned the wheel around was on there, uh, Hellhammer, and just said, sing something. <laughs> okay. So I would it. sing for days. Yeah. I mean, I just started singing and scribbling words. You know, we were down there for hours. We really didn't leave. We'd drink beer and eat our lunch down there. And it was like a 12-hour day. But after I was done, he would call in Wolf, Stefan Kaufman to come in and listen. And they'd evaluate and blah, blah, blah. Well, let's try him. Oh. Uh, that went on. I could take this forever. 
Uh, I could tell you the whole story if you like. This went on for about six weeks, and uh, Dieter was listening as well. Uh, the final audition was a live show in Cologne, and uh, we had been rehearsing kind of in this place that we played at. It was called The Empire. They advertised it as uh, Germany's biggest heavy metal band. Well, of course, everybody knew who it was. The night of the show, it was sold out. It was pretty amazing. That night, they said, welcome to the band. I mean, it was not a decided thing because I had flown over there. They were very careful about that big move. And, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think they were really thinking wide open. That, you know, that was, uh, it was a, a big choice. You know? Yeah. Uh, and uh, I don't really think they were prepared to do what they thought they were going to do. You know, when they started realizing, hey, this is a new album, this is a new sound, this is a new singer, this is a new audience, uh, it, was, it was hard on everybody. Of course, I was living in hog heaven. I thought it was great. But Why do you think uh, Eat the Heat didn't do as well as the previous albums? Uh, there's a lot of things. Like I said, the change was pretty severe. Um, you know, D-Train and um, Ecstasy were right on the lines of classic except but you know their their goal was you know after 400,000 units with balls to the wall they, they wanted to go platinum right and they couldn't do it with Udo it's not a radio voice it's a cult metal band and they're the best there is at it uh, that's why they hired me right uh, cross that line and it bombed I mean it, I didn't mean it didn't bomb I mean the record well it could have done okay. better right yeah I mean but you know there was internal workings that weren't working communication, a lot of things. So it was just everything that could go wrong, I think, went wrong. Would you have... Put me on the map, though. Put me on the map, though. I mean, that door opened for me, and everybody knew who I was. Right. You know, so it was a good thing for me. Would you have wanted to stay longer with the band? Yeah. And I would have done a lot of things differently. Such I was as? young and stupid. I would have done a lot of things differently. The older I am now, I realize, you know, I, I jumped into... <laughs> the top dog from a club band. Right. I don't know. I didn't know what it was like to tour the world. Right. I didn't know how it worked. I mean, those guys work. You're talking 12 hour rehearsals. You're talking 30 shows in a row. You're talking the world, not Minneapolis to Iowa. So it sounds like you're sort of saying you were sort of young and dumb. You just didn't get it. Yeah, I was. I was, but I was damn good at what I did. Right. And they were not so good at it, realizing that they had made a step in the right direction or the wrong direction. They didn't know what to think. So it, put it this way. It's when you're in a bad, like a bad marriage. Everything that happens is bad. Right. You know it. So uh, I don't regret it at all. It was a great experience. You know? Was, is there anything about that album that you would have liked to have done differently so that the sound maybe would have been better for radio or better for fans yeah. or... I think we should have gone heavier. Okay. We could have I've given the element. You know, I went into Bangalore Choir right out of that and took some of that with me, and that album was really good. Uh, we could have stayed a little heavier, um, not so all over the place. The drum sound was electronic drums with Stefan. He was sampling with Simmons when they came out. It was a big deal. All of it was a weird sound. I mean, I never liked the drum sound on that album. It's right. just weird to me. Uh, yeah, you know, shoulda, woulda, coulda, you know. Yeah. Now, uh, on that tour, um, Stefan was replaced by Ken Mary on drums. Ken, of course, was in the Alice Cooper band for a while. So just yep. curious, did you, did, he get, did you get into any discussions about what it was like touring with Alice Cooper? Did he ever give you any great insider stories? Told me that Alice was a weirdo. He drank massive amounts of Diet RC Cola. I loved to watch sea horror slash films and golf. <laughs> Uh, really didn't talk to the band, you know, the band were the band and Alice was in the back of the bus, um, put him on the map. Uh, I can say this about Ken. He learned the whole show in one day in his hotel room and played that night and played it like he'd been in the band for months. The Accept show or the Alice Cooper show? Accept. Really? So he just came in it like was, that? <laughs> they hired him. He came the night before. He started listening, did the deal, whatever the agreement was. The next night he's on stage. It was amazing. Great drummer. Wow. So, uh, other than Bonfire, what is next for, for David Reese? Are solo albums, more Bangalore, more anything? 
Bangalore's dead. Okay. I uh, I tried to revive that after Firefest, you know, blah 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 revival of, you know, we one of the most anticipated bands of the day it went over crazy. We made a live album of that show. Mm -hmm. I worked back into Kurt Mitchell's world and him and mine and Danny Greenberg and you know they wanted to do it. Uh, I thought Danny did, but Kurt just wants to stay at home and teach guitar and watch the grass grow under his feet. You know, he's had the labels take his house away, cars, really? marriage. Everything has happened to him has happened to me, and he's very bitter. The guy's a genius guitar player, but you know what? I can't make him decide that it's a good thing to go play on records and tour. No way. So I, I said, forget it. I miss him, but I wish him well. You know, I'm happy where I am. Yeah, so after the uh, touring cycle in this summer, have you started talking about let's get a next album ready? I mean, I know it's early yep. in the process, but have you started talking about that? Well, I never stop. And uh, I've written probably, I don't know, 15 new songs that I like. Right. Uh, Hans is very focused on me staying focused with Bonfire. So I said, okay, I'm cool with that, but I'm going to continue to write a new Dave album probably. Uh, we have plans to do record all these shows, which begin next week, Monday, okay. uh, and make a live album. Oh, we're going to put out, cool. like we did on Glorious, we redid uh, American Nights and uh, Sweet yep. Obsession, but we're going to record some of the classics during this tour and the new album and put it out in September, I believe. And then I was told Friday, I was in Stuttgart by the management, that we're going back in the studio in January for a studio album. And the label's doing an amazing job, so I, I believe it'll happen. Oh, that's kind of cool. Now, Glor Glorious, is a, like I said, is, is a fun, fun album. I, I listened to the whole thing uh, this week a couple of times. What would you like to see Bonfire become with you as the vocalist? Heavier, less heavy, more, more radio? Where would you like to take it? I know, I know Hans has his thing, but if you could choose, where would it go? I, I think what we tapped into... With Hans, mm -hmm. you know, if you'd have heard these songs before, what Hans? I mean, he's the executive producer. Right. He has this really cool talent about taking. He's got it in his head what it's really going to be like. Right. And you know, when you hear, a, oh, heard that a hundred times. What I read, and he really starts making that song. Right. It was great. I mean, you got like falling out of love is hard to do. You've got twenty one guns. That's a pretty rocking album. It's heavy, it's colorful, it's melodic, it's soft. It's got all the colors that I like. And if I would like to make an album like that, but bigger. Uh, the focus is to get out there. <laughs> anyway, anyway, there you go. Uh, so you just want, you were saying that uh, it, when you get to a second Bonfire album with the band, you'd like to do something a little more colorful. Uh, in the same, the same vein, because mm -hmm. whatever Hans throws at me, if you know, like this, I'm happy to go this direction because you and everybody I've talked to likes the record. Yep. Absolutely. Um, do. The reviews are fantastic. Uh, the sales are fantastic so far. I mean, this is the best selling album I've done in years. Yep. It's working. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, so I'm uh, happy. Yep. Yeah, so we'll, we'll show it one, uh, one last time. There it is. Oops. We'll get that, our hands off the uh, thing. Glorious. Uh, yeah, it really is a great piece of work, and I also like the packaging. The packaging is very sweet. Uh, yeah, David, that's Hans. <laughs> that, yeah, that's Hans. And you know, uh, Hans did something nice for me a couple of years ago. Uh, my uh, wife's father passed away from cool. uh, cancer, and we did a charity, a, a cancer charity uh, album called A World with Heroes, and he donated a live version of Sword and Stone to, to the wow. package. And, uh, you know, we, we raised over $30,000 for a palliative care home. And it was thanks to all those people donating these different songs. So uh, I, I've got uh, Hans and Bonfire forever in my heart. And I'm always appreciative. And David, uh, you know, I, I love speaking to you. I, I speak to the people and accept all the time. And, and you're sort of the, the piece of the puzzle that, that got stuck on the side. And that, that's not right. You're an you're important uh. part of the history as well. And, uh, uh, thank you. I mean, I think I am. Uh, I mean, it's really funny. That record uh, on Facebook, people are, are eating that record up the last couple of years mm -hmm. and telling me how they tap back into it and it's gotten legs again. Um, yep. I'm proud of it. I'm yeah, proud of it. I wish those guys well. They're... Nope. We lost our video oh. again. Damn video. Yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, we're frozen in time. We're really. frozen in time. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll do the best to edit this. There you are. This. 
Well, I'll do the best to edit all this, but uh, I guess we'll end on saying the Accept album is not a bad album. I think it was just oh. maybe the wrong album at that time with the yeah. the 80s scene sort of dying out and the, the grunge scene slowly coming. It's probably just right album, wrong time. And I think that's why people are going back to it now and going, it's, hey, it's a pretty timing. kick-ass. Yeah, it really is. David, absolute pleasure, uh, even uh, despite our Skype uh, limitations <laughs> thank you sir i appreciate it thank you for all you do thank you thank you and yeah i'm gonna make maybe sure we're I... coming to canada yeah i hope you do ash i'd love to see it i'd love to see it. and if i can help make Played it happen, a million you know. shows in canada. there you go head on over to montreal <laughs> I've been to canada. yeah thank you david thank you brother see you later Peace. thanks everybody bye-bye